So let me fight this misconception that I hear so much about technology consulting is that if you don't know tech, you don't know how to code, then you should not be a technology consultant. You should consider management consultants. However, I think that a lot of people forget about the other non-tech related roles yet being in tech consulting. So I want to make this video to talk about the difference between functional and technical consulting. So I'm gonna be bringing in my boyfriend at one point to talk about what he does in his daily life because it's very different from me. We literally do workday implementations, but we do completely different things. I have not coded a single bit in my career so far. It's been like two and a half years, I have not coded. And I know a lot of other people too who have also not coded. So it's not necessarily on my particular projects. I've been on five projects, not a single one I had to. So it's not necessarily about the projects. And even so, if you wanted to go into those kind of projects, you can. So there's like a lot of flexibility, but I do want to start off with the fact that there are multiple kind of jobs out there. Number one, if you want to be in a tech industry, you still can do so many things out there. And then number two, if you want to do tech consulting, where you want to consult in tech, I think at the very least, you should know what is the cool technology trends out there right now. What is AI? What is cloud? If you don't know anything about that, probably going to be a little bit difficult for you. However, like that's where uh, even so when management consultants and strategy consultants nowadays, they need to know some of this too, because that's how you can stay competitive. You use technology or you go digitally or anything like that. So with that in mind, I think at any point, if you don't understand tech or you don't like tech, you, you should try. There's so many resources out there on YouTube or in the internet. And honestly, my, my YouTube channel, there's a lot of podcast episodes I have up there that can explain a lot of this for you in very layman's terms. And, and I know like a lot of people don't have the resources, but YouTube is free. YouTube is there. Use it to your disposal to learn all of these things. Like one thing I would say is that when you search for this, look up things like AI 101 or AI for beginners or AI explains like anything like that with that kind of like title, you'll find something that they'll break it down for you in layman's terms. And let me know down below in the comments if you actually want something from my channel like that, where I bring in like other experts or people that are in the particular field that can talk about this in layman's terms. So that way you can learn about it too, in addition to consulting. So first off, I wanna start off, what is functional consulting and what is technical consulting? I think it would be easier to talk about what I do as a living. So I'm a functional consultant. I do workday financial software implementations that sounds very wordy, very technical, maybe even very financial too. So for me, the very least, I need to know something about finance, something about accounting. And if I don't know that, it's going to be very hard. And the reason why it is, is because for functional consulting, it's very focused on gathering business requirements from the client. If you don't understand the business, how do you know where to guide the conversation or how to drive the conversation? So for me, I had to know about that. I need to know like what the process would be. So for me, it would be something from like supplier accounts, like when you put in a supplier supplier, supplier invoice, the supplier accounting, and then you got procurement when you have a requisition and you get a purchase order, then you receive it, like the whole supply chain management right over here. Then you have business assets where whenever you have something that's trackable and it's something that's supposed to be capital. And then what, how does it depreciate? Does it amortize? Like something like that. And then you also have banking. Like when you get money coming in, what bank accounts should it be hitting? Like how should you reconcile? How should you be creating these transactions that are specifically for cash or for money like that? I had to know about that and I had to learn about a lot of that actually on the spot during my project. So even so, as long as you have some kind of exposure to understand this, you're still good. And when I came in, I did not code anything. What really the day in my life, and I'll try to do this eventually, but it's really hard to kind of track all what I do in one day because I don't do that. It's like all spread out through a project is that you try to follow through something where you're trying to listen to your client. You're trying to gather the requirements. Sometimes I like, I really like these sessions because we get to draw on the whiteboard, like draw me your process. And then we'll try to visualize their process in the software. So you don't actually need to code anything. All you need to know is the capabilities of the software or the limitations of the software. So for example, if they want something where like, oh, I want this button to be orange and we can't make it orange. That's a limitation. However, if they want something where like a logical flow of like, if this supplier invoice is over a hundred thousand dollars, we wanted to go to the CFO. Okay. We can do that. And that is something that you don't even need to know tech to do. You just need to be logical <laughs> doing that 
is what a functional consultant would do. We, however, in the workday practice, we do the configurations ourselves. However, in other implementations where there's like more code base, those kind of configurations are mostly for technical consultants. So functional consultants are focused on the management consulting side. You want to talk to the client, gather these requirements, build the flow, process management, process optimization, all those kind of things. And then after that, you talk to the technical consultants to try to make that happen. So this is where Addison's role comes in. Addison is an integrations consultant. So what he does, he mostly works with vendors. So let's say for example, your payroll, you talk to ADP. So ADP is like a lot of like these payroll services that most people end up using. So how do we integrate that with Workday is that he comes in, he talks to them, he tries to build connectors. And this is where he does have some kind of logical flow involved as well. However, there are also some coding involved as well. For Workday, it's not even related to Java or anything like that. It's like their own language. So he had to go training for this, but to do this, like he needed to have some kind of exposure to how coding is. And even so, I know so many people who are in this particular field who have never done any coding in their past. They just know how to gather as long as you know logical flow and you can understand it, then you can do it. They're always gonna provide you training. So for his role, it's more technical. He works with mostly vendors. So let's say for example, the bank account situation. I would talk to them about like, what do you want in this bank account? What kind of like actual transactions will you be processing from this bank account? What kind of reporting do you want? The questions he would be asking is, what kind of bank statement format would it be? Would it be BAI2? Like then we need to connect it to the SFTP and then hook it up into Workday. Like that's the kind of conversation he'll have to the bank. The bank will be mostly working on the actual like format of the file and then he will put it into Workday to make it work. And then for the actual like client side, that's where he would be showing them like, okay, this is what we do for the integration. And then this is how we run it, how we test it. So it really isn't as much functional side compared to me, because like if he were to do something, because like a lot of times if he had questions about something on the functional side, he doesn't know it himself. He would talk to a functional consultant. He doesn't need to do it himself. So that's the main difference is that functional consultants focus on the business side in a technology or software implementation project. And then for the actual, tech side, like that's where you make it happen. You either build those connectors for integrations or you work with the data or you build it up, you customize it you, by customizing it. I mean like programming or coding or whatever. Th there's like some roles that are in between too that are like, like product managers, business analysts or UX designers or designers, anything like that. They're kind of in the middle. Uh, and one thing I do wanna mention though is that I would say like, if you don't know what a functional consultant does, we're most similar to what a business analyst would do. So business analysts would typically be on the client side, a co functional consultant is on the consulting side. Technical consultants, we are, they're very similar to like what the IT department would be doing, or they're like application developers or software developers would be doing. That's kind of like their parallel. They would be working with them and then we would be working with their functional teams. So when we work with the functional teams, like let's say for example, procurement, we would be working with their procurement team rather than we're not working with their IT team compared to them. We are still working with the IT team if there's any particular overlaps, but that's honestly it. And so to get into these roles, I think all you really need is those client facing roles and the ability to learn anything about tech because to be in functional consulting, you need to still understand what are the tech trends out there, how to use technology, how does technology enable businesses? Because like you also will get a lot of training as well, but to get that to for like a company, for a firm to think that you're a good fit for tech consulting, that's what they're looking for. And then vice versa for like, let's say Addison's role, that's where he would be focusing more about like, oh, I have some kind of coding aspect or he doesn't even need to do something like that. It could be just more of like technical aspect. If you had like Java or Python on there, like that's where you would be focused on that area. So there's just like these areas honestly are not cookie cutter. There's many ways where it overlaps as well. So if you are interested in either going into the technical side, you still can. A lot of these consulting firms, they have a lot of strong training programs and big training budgets. So if you're interested in learning Python, but you come from like a psychology major background, you can still do it. All you have to do is just go sign up for the training and get their approvals. And honestly, if you start young, if you're like an analyst or a senior analyst or associate, whatever, you can still do it because you probably have not specialized or you have not designated yourself to a particular area. The moment you designate yourself or specialize, that's where it could be a little bit tricky because like they don't want you to leave a particular practice. However, it's still a thing, okay? You get like a people manager or a mentor or a sponsor or in Accenture speak, we, we talk about career counselors or people manager. Like for us, that's where we would talk to our 
career counselors or people manager on what we want in our career and then how we can pivot. So for me, if I wanted to go into integrations, I would talk to my career counselor and say like, I want to go into integrations and then this is going to kind of move. Or I can move completely out of the workday practice and go into some like management consulting. It just really means that you need to network and you need to really work your ass off to make people know that you're interested in that. So it really isn't clear cut. I don't want people to completely write off technology consulting just because you don't know how to code or you don't know technical work. I think at the very least, you should know what are the tech trends out there? Like what is cloud? What is internet of things? What is AI? What is security? That's all really. But like for me, I didn't really major in tech. I was just concentrating in management information systems, which is just four classes. It's not like a whole program or anything. I concentrated in finance and strategy in addition to that, which is kind of why they put me in work through finance just because of my finance background. But I brought over, ah, I brought over Addison over here. What are you currently doing at Accenture as a, um, were you, ah, <laughs> what about I? <laughs> What are you currently doing at Accenture? Well, I'm currently working as an uh, integration consultant. Can you tell me what you do on a normal day basis? Let's see. I join in calls. I do a lot of builds, what, development work. What does that mean? Do a build. So for my job, since as I mentioned, I'm in integrations. So what we do is that we have we build connectors that connects from one location, which I say the source, to the target system. And we have to find a way to get the through smoothly. So how do you build that? Do you code at all? It is more of configuration and coding. So it depends what kind of data you're trying to flow from one system to another. Sometimes you need to convert the uh, data into like a, a simple type of formatting. For me, it's, for example, XML is a simple type of file format. So you can turn that file into, into the XML using XSLT and then you can move that file over depending if that target system needs that, I mean not needs, but it can use that format. Or is there anything that you were doing on a normal day basis? Did you learn it in school at all? No, of course not. So where did you learn all this? So I'm just working from like certifications and just have a basic understanding of coding and how workflows and diagrams and you know just a lot of just learning on my own and learning from other people and accenture provided training so what would you say is for anyone that is interested in doing technical consulting what would you recommend them to do or advice if they want to get into it technical consulting well as i first have a background at least in in like in for example computer engineering or something to do with computer science you need to at least understand how to code or and how the technology works behind so i mean there's a lot of ways you can do it you could do do a boot camp do school or just learning from youtube do you think you could technically come in as a business major and then do integrations? Mm, I mean, it depends if you have both backgrounds. If you're just all business, I don't think you will understand all the terminologies. So you have it here. That's the difference between functional and technical consulting. For functional consulting, you need to know the business side more than you need to know the technical side, but you need to understand the technical side. And then for him, as you said, it, you need to know about the technical side and you can do that through in school, boot camps, learning on your own, YouTube. Are you going to finally do a YouTube channel? Are you going to learn? Are you going to teach them? I think like a really good resource is to go follow him on Medium. He does a lot of articles about mainly just coding for beginners. I mean, we talk about Python for coding, but yeah, it can be incorporated to any type of other codes like Java or maybe even C++. Follow him on Medium down below. A lot of those articles are completely free as long as you don't have all your free articles used up. Otherwise, you have to wait. <laughs> and he also is going to have a Python for Beginners session or Maybe. workshop in technology, in technology consulting community. So make sure to join in the Facebook group down below as well. Thank you so much for being in this video. Now you may leave. Where's the door paycheck? is that way. I'm waiting for the money. door is that way. Where's my money? <laughs> I hope this video helped you a lot. Uh, it's like a lot 
to take in because I think a lot of people just think technology consulting, I need to know something in tech, but you really don't have to. I think like a lot of times they really want those people that understand tech or know tech, but also understand the business side and knows the business side. So that's the happy medium. In fact, a lot of people in my area, they come from CPA backgrounds or they come from accounting backgrounds. So they're like, they didn't even have any technical background at all. They just learned it on the fly as long as they knew anything about tech at all. So thank you guys so much. And let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions at all. And also if you want a like internal transfer video specifically, it's going to take a little bit more time because I need to talk to some people on how other firms do it. But that's what I would be saying. So thank you guys so much and see you guys next time. Bye.